Let's bring in uh, Biogen's president and CEO, Chris Wiebacher. Let's just start. Uh, I know you were able to hear some of that, Chris, but is the, I thought the brain swelling or the side effect profile was pretty similar. Is it, is it something to be concerned with with the, with the subcutaneous administration? Uh, that, that's right, Joe. The, the, uh, the rates are roughly similar. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, the infusion was, is actually uh, twice a month as opposed to twice a twice week. A but, um, you know, the, obviously the, uh, an auto-injector, um, which can be done at home, is going to be an awful lot more, more convenient for patients. Much more convenient. It, how, how, what is the state of the infusion? It's difficult right now. Is, that, is there a shortage of, of uh, being able to, to do it? Because it really, this is a game changer, and you wouldn't think necessarily that just the way to administer something could, you know, totally change the, uh, the profile that analysts look at for how profitable the drug could be. But, you know, if, if we step back, actually, Joe, what, what's really interesting, this is a, this is a brand new category, really. Um, right. You know, there hasn't been a treatment for Alzheimer's before. And, uh, you know, Biogen and ASI have been investing for over 20 years and billions of dollars to actually get this far. And, you know, we've known that, that Alzheimer's is caused by the death of neurons, but what caused that? And really, just this year, with getting uh, Lakembi approved, we really had the full evidence base that we know that removing plaques uh, correlates to, to improved uh, cognition. So, so that's really a breakthrough. Now we're starting to think about what else can we know about this? Can we make this more convenient for patients? Can we uh, figure out who's the patient who's going to benefit the, the most from one of these treatments? And can we find other modalities um, that, that take the, uh, the treatment even beyond that? So um, although we've got the first new drug, I mean, the sub-Q formulation just demonstrates our continued commitment to, to improving um, the treatment options uh, for, for patients. And we think sub-Q really... Uh, will make it an awful lot easier. You know, uh, these are elderly patients. Some of them are more fragile. And so making that, that treatment uh, more convenient is, is quite important. Chris, does, does research continue on uh, a different uh, way to approach the pathology? Uh, I mean, I, I know removing the plaque health, it's not a cure. I mean, could you see down the road where there is something else that would be you, you could develop something in combination would be used with a plaque remover? something that works in a, in a different way? Or is, is, are, are we convinced now we just need to do this better and eventually it, it's going to uh, work against this disease, which, which is going to be really, you know, with an aging population, it's, it's a daunting challenge. Well, again, the, the, the real problem of Alzheimer's is, is the death of neurons. And right now we don't know how to bring neurons back to life, there, although there are some teams working on trying to regenerate. So what we really want to do is, is stop the death of, of neurons. And there, there, are, there are believed to be two causes um, for the death of the neurons. One is the amyloid plaques, okay. and Lakembi um, works to, to remove those plaques and, and stop the, the cascade that, that leads to the neuronal death. And the second is tau, because if you have Alzheimer's, you, you typically have these amyloid plaques, and you have these things called tau tangles. So on the amyloid, what we can do is if we can try to get earlier um, in the in the d disease progression, then we think we can have also better outcomes because not as many neurons will have died by that point. And, and one of the issues of this disease that's quite different than others is that you actually have a silent and deadly phase of this disease where the plaques are accumulating and people don't know. So you actually have the disease long before you have the symptoms. And and what we used to call early uh, onset of Alzheimer's was when you had symptoms. But what we really would like to do is, is, is try to uh, find patients before, before they the get symptoms, symptoms yeah. before there's more plaques. And so we have a study called AHEAD that's ongoing that, that will look at patients much earlier in that. And, you know, one of the, the uh, ways that you can tell how, how severe um, Alzheimer's is, is the level of tau. And so we published mm -hmm. data this week where we showed that uh, patients who have low tau levels who are early in, in their um, stage of progression actually had a 76% response rate and 60% actually improved. So 76% stayed stable and 60% actually even improved in their, in their benefit. So we, we're, we're learning about where's the best time to, to, to uh, initiate treatment. And that's where sub-Q will also be important mm -hmm. because we think patients will be on drug longer and, and therefore freeing them up from the, the twice-monthly infusions is, is quite important. But then yeah. you're left with 
how. And, and that's where we also have had some encouraging results where we're, we're developing a new medicine that's going after a completely different modality, which is town, okay. and probably hey, ultimately Chris? we'll want to combine those. Hey, Chris, it's Angelica Peebles here. It's great to see you again. I just wanted to ask, a lot of analysts are wondering how you see sub-Q being used compared to the IV. Will these be, you know, a different set of patients, or how might this actually roll out into the market? And also, so far as you do roll out Lakembi, what are you hearing from doctors and, and reimbursement issues? What's important for patients is optionality, and that's what this uh, offers. And so physicians will decide which... Uh, um, whether the, the sub-Q or the infusion is, is best for their patients. Clearly, we, we first have to now go to the FDA. Um, uh, ASI, who leads on the regulatory front, um, has uh, indicated that they intend to, to file for approval of the sub-Q at the end of the first quarter. And so, you, you know, it'll be still some time before this is actually available in the marketplace. Concerning the launch, uh, the launch is on, on track and as, as, we ex as we had expected. This is a complex disease and the complex treatment. And, and therefore, um, you, you know, it takes a while for the, the care pathways to develop. Um, between uh, an initial referral to a neurologist and, and actually getting an infusion can be as, as long as one to two months. So that's what we're seeing. Um, and, you know, because this is an area where there were so many failures in the past, I think a lot of healthcare systems wanted to wait and see, could we actually get full approval? Could we get uh, CMS reimbursement? We have all of those things. And now we're seeing a lot of the medical centers who are gearing up, sometimes having to hire people, figuring out these, uh, these care pathways. You know, you need to triage patients between those who are eligible for treatment who aren't, because not every Alzheimer's patient is eligible. Then going through a PET scan for diagnosis, uh, getting the infusions in, in, in terms of the treatment, and then following up on safety with MRIs. So we, we, we expect to start to see the, uh, the progression of sales really late in the fourth quarter and, and into the beginning of the, the first quarter next year.